ladies and gentlemen, concept artist on all the recent Star Wars films, Jake Lunt Davis. How are you doing, Jake? Very well. Hi, Lee. Hi, Sam. Thanks for having me on the show. Hello, everyone else out there. Good, good to have you here, Jake. Good to have you. Um, so, I haven't seen you for a while, Jake. Um, the hair's the hair's grown a little bit yeah. since I last saw you. Yeah, my lockdown. Look, look, know, it's my lockdown hobby. I have... <laughs> <laughs> Looking really good. I'm only, I'm only... Yeah. Usually Adam. I don't. I'm not sure if you've met Sam before, but uh, just to do the formalities, Sam Prentice, Jake Lunt Davis, Jake Lunt Davis, Sam Prentice. Hello there, sir. Hey, Sam. I'm sure I've I seen, think, I've I seen think we may have met. I think we oh, may yeah. have met in passing, but uh, yeah, good to meet you formally. <laughs> Hello. Um, <laughs> so, Jake kindly don't um, watch the August show, Sam, as you're aware, and he kindly donated some of his artwork um, for charity, which raised some money during the show in August. Um, so thanks for dropping in and, and watching some of the show we did, Jake. And, you know, I appreciate you just, you yeah. know, without asking you, kindly donating the artwork and it helped towards raising money for Calm. So That's thank you very much for that. Um, like and then good idea after the show today as well, wondered if you could just give us a little um, insight into, firstly, really, you know, we'll get on to Star Wars, but how you got into what you're doing to your concepts, art and, you know, how you got into the industry. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know how far back to go. Uh, I mean, I can go back all the way to when I was a little kid, and you know, this is the kind yeah. of job, dream job, concept designer, concept yeah. artist. Really? Yeah, Star Wars. I love Star Wars. When I was a kid, though, I don't know. It just wasn't one of those jobs that you ever thought was realistic. You know, it was like that Hollywood, and this is like you know, Wiltshire where I grew up. <laughs> so it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Yeah, it just didn't even think about trying to make it happen. Uh, I ended up all artistic. I can draw, I can paint. Well, I can draw. And I went to college, I studied graphic design. I wasn't that thrilled about graphic design by the end of it. So I thought, I'm not going to be uh, a magazine designer or whatever. It wasn't for me. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then I suddenly got my job. They said, do you want a job as a runner on this TV show? Um, and I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't have anything better to do. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> and that was it, basically. I, mean, I was literally making cups of tea and, and helping out and running around doing errands, as runners do. And then I thought, you know, I could uh, I could help out in the art department a bit over there. And I, I wormed my way in. I I basically showed them I, I could paint and nail things together because it's quite pretty, you know, set building and all that sort of thing. Uh, within... I don't know, day, weeks, I suppose. No, uh, years. I was, uh, I ended up you know, being in the art department on loads of TV. It was really TV commercials and pop videos in the 90s, um, and loads of TV shows. I did live and kicking with, uh, what? you know, the BBC and you know, loads of kids' shows, lots of sets, set stuff. But I ended up, I thought, I'm gonna, I, what I want to do is I, I want to be a production designer. That was my, uh, I'll be a production designer. So I was aiming for that. I did. I ended up, you know, by the late nineties, I was art directing TV commercials and, and pop videos, things like that. Then uh, that's kind of my first meal. There's two things happened. I met Neil. And I was doing some character design for a, a kids show. It never went anywhere. Pilot show. And Neil Gamlin. Uh, he was. Uh, he'd been asked to make the, the puppets for this TV show. And that's how I met Neil. And from there, I just got more involved with Neil for about three or four years, I think. I ended up doing loads of kids' shows. Again, Neil was doing lots of kids' shows then because uh, animatronics was on the wane. It wasn't like the, you know, yeah. it was all digital. Everyone was like, yeah, it's all going to be digital. So really, animatronics was sort of not not really flavour of the month. And I think Neil was, um, he did a lot of sort of kids' shows and stuff like that. Um, and I think the last job I did with him was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Tim Burton, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And then after that, things really, we, our, Neil and I's path parted, really. I think he was doing more like makeup effects and uh, stuff which I didn't really have anything to kind of contribute on a design level. Right. And I was also then doing a lot of uh, storyboards by that time as well. So I, I ended up ditching so much storyboards, which quite frankly, it's easier than doing production design. <laughs> and I was getting so much work. 
uh, I just thought I'll just storyboard artist. That's that's now the focus, and I ended up doing that for years. Whilst I'm doing storyboarding, uh, a company that I work for, film, uh, I used to do a lot of stuff for this uh, company called the Viral Factory, who used to make these like really insane little like uh, viral films in the early sort of noughties. So yeah. of their commercial things, but they were they were people would share them virally. And uh, I would storyboard these. And they said, oh, do you want to direct one? I'm like, okay, so yeah, sure. I directed one, and then I directed loads of these little kind of comedy, stupid, wow. funny yeah. films. And then I thought, oh, yeah, I'm now I'm going to be a director. This is amazing. So my course is continuing. <laughs> amazing, yeah. I, got, uh, I ended up getting represented by a commercial production company in about 2012, I think. Uh, I, I did, like, two jobs for them. I thought, this is it. I'm going to be a commercials director. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, and then about a year later, Neil phoned me up. And uh, I hadn't spoken to Neil for about five years. Uh, he'd done Prometheus in that time. Uh, I didn't yeah, aware of that. But anyway, he phoned me up and was like, oh, hi, Neil, how are you? He goes, hey, guess what? I've got some news for you. What? I've got Star Wars. I'm like, uh, I won't repeat what I said. It was quite exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, he said, "Look, you know, he, he, he said I'm going to try and get a, a, a British crew together. Do you want? Are you interested in sort of being on it?" And of course, I was. Hell yeah, so, yeah. So within a sort of couple of weeks, I was. Doing, I did a, like a week's. Uh, I did a week's sort of test, a test week, if you like. Uh, so I had this sort of like online. Uh, Zoom didn't exist then. It was like a uh, conference call uh, with the production designers um, and, uh, in the States, and they briefed us on uh, you know, a character, which was effectively what would become Maz. Uh, that was the first thing they were going to crack. And I spent a week sort of uh, drawing up, you know, just you know, give us some ideas. I gave them my ideas, and here's a week later, that was like a little test. And um, yeah, they were quite pleased with what I did. And I started the week after at Pinewood. Me and I... Julian were the first two. That's incredible. <laughs> For anyone wanting to get into film or t the TV industry, you know, he's a bit of a, a, a regular recommendation, but a runner, that's that's the place to start, really, isn't it? You know, if, yeah. if Industry. Yeah, you've got, I, I think, yeah, totally. I mean, it's, you, you'll meet people. It's all about meeting people as you go yeah. along. Um, I mean, obviously, I came in years ago, and I'm sure there are now things in effect, you know, like Facebook and, and, and social media and groups which share jobs. That didn't exist, and it was very hard to get this sort of foot in the door. And I, I'm not saying things are easy. I'm just saying things are perhaps different. But certainly, you know, working you've got to you know, working from the bottom up and meeting people as you go, those people that you meet, all you know, the kids that you work with, if you like, will progress yeah. alongside not necessarily alongside you, they'll go off and do their thing and then years later they can come back. And I think, you know, the big thing is to meet as many people and be sociable and nice and you know, amenable and do a good job and it will all kind of, you know, feed back if you're good. You know, so and yeah, yeah. You can start off running. You can work your way into camera departments, and yeah, they'll, they'll, if you show willing, I'm sure that's how you get it. And you, you go yeah. up and, and and get your foot in the door that way. Yeah, running. I found that brown brown nosing Lee Towsy was the best uh, method to uh, to get involved with film. Um, and you know, here we are. It's uh, it's it's crazy. No, it's you, obviously, you've gone on a, a real amazing journey. Um, obviously, before Star Wars, what's your kind of favourite non-Star Wars character that you've, you know, you've designed? I don't, I, I don't know if I really... Oh, I don't know. I was doing so many... I think nothing that you'd ever know about. You know, I, I did loads of these sort of... I think Star Wars was the turning point, really. I was just doing commercials. I couldn't say I did this. I did, like, the, <laughs> this... Insane, like TV show for like ITV, um, in about nineteen ninety nine called Meet the Neighbors, uh, with Neil. It was one of the first jobs I did, in, you know, totally with Neil. Uh, was, and I thought, wow, is this going to be brilliant? And it was quite funny. Um, had loads of people like Dude McKinnon and Hugh, not Hugh Laurie. 
I saw various people, Simon Callow was in it as well, doing the voices. It was like, wow, this is really cool. Um, and it never went anywhere, really. It sort of never made a second season. But thereafter, I was just doing storyboards and um, did game boards and things like that, video games, things like that. They were quite cool. Any games we may yeah. know, Jake? Any, any well-known games? Oh, Bond, Bond Bloodstone. So we yeah. Bond okay. Bloodstone. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. And I did another game called Blur, which was like a driving game, which was going to have a huge story arc. But then they did the video, you know, it was all story based. And then they did a huge sort of game test and they ditched it because no one liked it. So, which is frustrating because I directed all of the cutscenes. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that. So, so prior to Star Wars, I don't know really if there's anything worth talking about. No, that's, that's cool. No, it's interesting. It's interesting to know how you got into it. And, you know, obviously you thought you were doing cool stuff before Star Wars, which you were. But uh, then you got the coolest job, of course, yeah, is Star Wars, which is, you know, what yeah. got you here, really. So I'm going to just reel off some of the things you're involved with, Jake. And this is just a few of them. Um, BB-8, Speeder, Lucky right. Beast, Boba Joe, the Abenado Race, Incar Putt's Costume, Steel Peckerberg, yeah. Copperbore, PZ-40, yeah. BU-4D, yeah. Robodan, Rathtar, Grumgar, SE-2, PAL, K2SO, yeah. 9EZ, Agricultural Joy, Porgs, BB9E, Thala Simons, Caretakers, Fam, Snook, Uckle, yeah. Defensio, Store Silt, Kempig, Schlop, Rebel BB Units, Keto Site, Mother Proxima, Grab Droid, Rio, Dava Casamam, Fagus Fandita, Dio, Aki Aki Tribe, Kylo Ren's Repaired Helmet, Bulio, AI1L3, Obax, Seleno, Chadro, The Oracle, Cyclorians, Giant Orange Droid, and Clifton. The last two I couldn't find the real names for. But that is just a few of them. Early you know, not necessarily yeah. entirely <laughs> um, responsible for them, but um, you were certainly involved no. with the, on a lot of those characters. Yeah. I mean, Phenomenal. just to clear up, and so everyone doesn't kind of fully understand how it works, is that we you know, working for Neil... Neil Scanlon ran the creature effects department, uh, and he was you know, in, you know, responsible for all the animatronics and the, for droids and creatures and their design as well. So, in his department, he had the concept team, which was me, and there was Luke Fisher, and there was Ivan Manzella, and Martin Rezard. And the four of us would basically sit there and create most of the aliens and droids that you see in the film. There were a few that came out to like to a few that came from other sources. I will but yeah, and we all got to sort of pitch in on those things. So like yeah. he said you know, we'd be everyone would be given this sort of hey, we've got a character and he's doing porgs or K2SO or whatever. And we'd all sit there and we'd all come up with a load of ideas. And then the, the, if the director would latch on to a certain thing, then the person that was kind of closest to it would take that. If it, you know, if it was strongly their design, they would take it and they would yeah. see it through. Everyone else would sort of fall back and turn on, turn to something else. So like for instance, with K2SO, we all started off doing K2SO. And by the end of it, actually, Luke Fisher, he he his sort of designs were the ones which um, yeah. you know, Gareth was sort of like most. So any input I had was early on on k Right. So, well, I'll, yeah. I'll, a BB-8 actually would be a good example as well, wouldn't it, Jake? Because you know we've all a lot of people would have seen the um, JJ Abraham sketch. Yeah. And that, yeah. You know, which is yeah. the original idea. Apparently, you know, that's that's where it all started. But mm. could you share with us the route that that took? And you know, you weren't the only person involved, obviously, but you were heavily involved with the, the development of BB-8, of course. Yeah, I think okay, yeah, BB-8. It was a it was a post-it note, I think. It was a little yellow on a yellow post-it note, uh, and yeah, JJ drew a. He, he wanted a ball, and it had a hemisphere on top. He set exactly yeah. that silhouette in place, and then. Uh, Lucasfilm, uh, as senior art director, uh, Christian Altsman at Lucasfilm, who uh, he also did Baby Yoda. So uh, he's 
<laughs> we'll know him from there. Uh, he did the whole lot of sketches. If you look at these sketches for BBA, you, you'd know, you'd, you'd said, who's that? You'd go, that's BBA. Because he's got a ball and he's got a, a, a hemisphere for a head. And he's got a lot of orange. He's got a lot of white. But JJ, when it got to JJ and to us at that point, and, and Neil to taking this on, it was like, yeah, it's still not quite right. Uh, could you, you know, I think he asked Neil and me, oh, he asked me basically, <laughs> could we bring something to it and, and you know, see what we could add? So I then added various details that went towards what BB8 is. It is, it's an interesting process because it's a work with not just me sitting. I did sit there and draw cool things. Like, yeah, it needs a bit of R2D2, this, and it needs a bit of asymmetric you know, positioning on the eyes. But then there's a lot of working with the team, I think. You know, Neil has a lot of input, obviously. And uh, Josh Lee, who is also, he's like, he led the animatronics on the design for BB-8. He had a lot of input. And Brian Herring and Dave Chapman, who were puppeteers, equally had a lot of input. And together, as you were sort of, you know, we made little mock-ups that Brian could put, push around. Like there was a simple ball uh, with a little head, and they were tiny. Uh, and we could push them out and draw on them and get an idea. And I think one of the things we realized, for instance, was that you know, Lee, Josh had created you know, the way BB-8 was going to work was essentially it's a ball on a stick. And it's like, effectively, it's a wheel. It just rolls in one direction. It's, it has that. But it wants to look, uh, it wants to look omnidirectional, which is where partly where the graphics that we chose to put on there come in, and partly Brian's technique of puppeteering. So Brian adds a bit of wobble to it, okay? Which gives it that sort of loop, loop. And then the way we positioned the pattern on it was off kilter. So where the axle goes through, just is sort of fairly random. You've got these six uh, circles, if you like. They're just sort of off, offset to that yeah. uh, axle. So that as it rolls along, these it, it, they're all sort of spinning wildly in diagonal. So combined with... Brian's movement and combined with the positioning of those uh, circles, you get this other omnidirectional movement. And that was the result of quite a lot of toing and throwing. Uh, you know, you, you know, Josh's input and, and, and Neil and, and Brian were all sort of you know, trying different speeds and I tried different sizes. Yeah, if you got too small, it became blurry. So it had to be a certain size. So yeah, it was an yeah. interesting sort of. Uh, development, trying to find the basic structure of those patterns. And once we got those, yeah, then I just filled, filled them in. <laughs> it was like, okay, we'll do that crazy. Yeah, that was sort of just me making it out. But even those patterns were, again, driven slightly by Josh. You know, Josh had to make this thing physically go together. He had to take it apart. He had to be able to get in and have an access point to do yeah. the change the battery or whatever it was and, and, and repair it. So again, there were decisions made along the way that drove the external design. It wasn't purely just made up for aesthetics. It had a functional purpose, even down to you know, how the puppet would operate. And yeah, again, even sort of details around perhaps how the neck and the collar, that's all sort of in liaison with Josh. You know, he's got tolerances to meet. He's got He's got to go to certain points. And it, you've got to have certain amounts of gap, you know. So function drives the form, I guess. You're kind of like the forgotten hero, you know, because you know you you, you see the concept um, are on you know online and things like that. But when you when you're building, you don't go back to those fundamental um, images so much. So when I, for instance, when I started building a BB-8 head and 3D printing it and stuff, I was looking at it one day and I was like. Man, this really looks like R2. And if you look yeah. at how things are set up, uh, and I found it really interesting with some of the movements and stuff on the on the actual dome itself, it really, really kind of, uh, for me, certainly reflected kind of how R2 looks from a dome point of view. So it was interesting to see that you guys had really kind of looked at that, understood it, um, and, you know, adapted yeah. it into, into this 
crazy, crazy, um, you know, ball of magic. Um, you know, and again, the other thing I've noticed as well, on your Instagram, and I've seen this quite frequently, um, there's stuff in The Mandalorian that is sort of based off your concept, right? They've well, I think they've that. just taken, I think as far as I know, they've just taken elements that we've not used. They haven't remade anything specifically. Are we talking droids or are we talking background aliens? But background aliens and things like that. They're just, I think they've just reused old existing costumes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Well, I think That's they, cool. Some droids, didn't they? they made the Weddle droid and they made. That R2 unit that was in episode 11 or 10 or something. Yeah, the uh, the yeah. one with the AOT um, dome. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, like, it's interesting. You were saying about offsetting the panels. And when you see builders that just rush to build their BB-8s, the first thing they, some yeah. of them, are, is plonks the head on and they put it directly on one of the discs. So it's, so it's symmetrical and it looks. <laughs> and as soon as you point that, yeah, like, yeah, and some people can't write that. You know, it's it's maybe a mistake they've made in the build process. And like, yeah, I've got to build it again now got, uh, because yeah. it looks so That's wrong. Not. You know, and uh, yeah. you know, you put your thought into that, and and that is a, obviously a conscious decision. It's not just a happy accident. You you know, you spend no, no. time, and like you just you know went through that. It, that was done on purpose. Yeah, exactly. Out of it, you remember how long that took from start to sign off. On BB-8, how how long did you spend on that? Do you know? Oh God, I just... there's a no. question. I mean, it's sort of like <laughs> months, back my brain. Months months. We, started, we started shooting in. We, they took it to Abu Dhabi in around March, I think, and we probably start. I started in June. I started in June 2013. We right. probably started. BBA in the summer of 2013. Yeah, right. right. So months. Ju yeah. July, August. And right, yeah, okay. five or six months to get it to wow. get it to where they had it on set. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I just remember witnessing one one of the details was the eye. And I remember all the mock-ups you did, the different eye positions and the eye styles. Yeah. Even yeah. down to stuff like that. That I remember that being quite a lengthy process, that getting yeah. getting on, you know, getting that happy. You know, getting that right, and that's the thing with the big characters, like the yeah, um, yeah, anything that's a main character, you know, BBH, you end up doing a lot of versions and options and tweaking, and you know, it really matters, you know, to everyone, yeah. directors, less so, say, with random background alien where we get much more carte blanche, you know, like say the the, the, the track droid, the ALT droid, that's yeah. just a a droid in the background so yeah. no no one really had any uh, input higher than neil and me you know yeah. i don't think the director really really would have you yeah. know that's just another droid and it's yeah. cool but no Whereas, no like, bb8 was a key character of course yeah, yeah and they really do need a lot of um in you know a lot of options again i think there's a the photos you can see there were some photos of Claude remember, um, in one of the magazines, Vanity Fair or something like that, last year. And there's, you can see in the background, there's a big uh, display. It's part of the big show. Yeah, the show and tell. Yeah. So we were in FGH stage or whatever. And, uh, yeah, they had Claude. And then we had on the back, we had all those, um, art, you know, easels with all the sort of artwork on for JJ to look at. And if you look in one of those photos, you can see like just dozens and dozens of Dio, pictures of Dio with different eyes. I mean, you can't tell what they are all, so can't really know the details, but they are wheel trim options for JJ to approve. I mean, it's right. it was, it, it's so anal. With, with Dio, I remember doing options on the tread, you know, like his, his tire yeah. tread, dozens of those. Options on... There's some little mouldings that go around on the between the tire tread and the main hub. There's a ring <laughs> that again did dozens of options on the pattern that goes around that ring. So wow. they really do care when it comes wow. to yeah, the yeah, absolutely mm. amazing, 
Amazing. Well, interestingly enough, you know, I've seen some builders more recently looking at concept art and adapting 3D printing to, you know, to your concept really? art, um, which, yeah, and, I, you know, there's people working, whirring away in the background, looking at different things. And I'll bring up an image very, very quickly um, of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm guessing an early sort of Dio. He's Dio. Uh, <laughs> I I love this. I you know it, it almost it reminds me of like the Navi computer, you yeah. know, in um, in an X wing. You know that for me is um, you know an incredible piece of artwork. Uh, almost kind of you know you are essentially like the Ralph McQuarrie of modern times, right? Modern Star Wars franchise, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know it's incredible, absolutely incredible. And again, you know, people miss that kind of concept art. They they miss. You know, the character would be in it for two seconds. I saw it on set, you know, something would be there, then it's yeah. gone. And you'll never, and you can see it in the visual dictionary, of course, yeah. but how that got to be made into a thing. Uh, Lee, for a good example, is that little blue droid, you know, the little track thing, the tiny, tiny yes. thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the most I saw it was when it was being photographed. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. A, a good time to bring it up, actually, Sam, is the agricultural droid, which I think you've got an image of there. Yes, I do. Where are we? Here we go. There he is. Oh, this. Somebody sent me a pic. Then I saw somebody sent me a model of this. I yeah. Yes. Not, yeah, they're like building a figure. You know, That's right. Yeah. Figures. Yeah. Somebody sent me a pic. I don't need to it. Yeah. And I think, I believe that someone's looking to make it into a costume as well. Well, that's... I think. Because yeah, it, it never made it. It never made it into the film, did it, Jake? No, it was an idea. That was an idea. Yeah. A, co a costume concept, which I kept trying to insert. And, to, and we did, you know, I think that was done for Rogue One. It was going to be, yeah. you know, That's in that opening world where Jin grows up. And I just had this idea, right? It was like, wouldn't it be really cool if we get a, a, a performer to walk backwards, right? So whoever's going to perform, if, you don't, if, if one of you guys is going to build this as a costume, you've got to walk backwards because that's how you get the bent knees. And then you've got that giant uh, water butt on the back. That's where that, your head goes. Uh, how you, You're hiding in a sort of, I don't know, it's like a double-skinned liquid. Um, so there's, there's, you have like a barrel with a double skin that had some liquid in it. It's pretty opaque, so you couldn't see the performer. But it gave the sense of liquid without it being, you know, a ton of weight. Because <laughs> it was like that size of liquid would weigh a ton. And then the performer's head and shoulders fit into that barrel. Uh, it's all about uh, what I really love is, is hiding performers. I, and I just think it's the most exciting thing ever. Trying to hide a person inside a costume. And you look at it and you think, I don't know how they've done that. Where are they? I don't know. Um, so no, I love Oh, I love that about your concept stuff, Jake, because, you know, you're, you're very helpful to us builders as well. You know, when we're working at Pinewood, you kind of do sketch in where the performer would hide, which is always very well, considerable to do that. that. And then you the know. reality is far more difficult. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it, it's, it's sometimes very difficult to translate. It's like that green droid, you know, that crab, the crab droid. Yes. Yeah, we could bring that up, actually, yeah. That one, which again, now that's drawn based uh, where that had Tom and Derek in it, who were that's in the right. logo people. And yeah. the original drawing, this is a, a much later on drawing, but the original drawing, no, there's no way that one, there's no way. They just couldn't do that. It looks doable in that picture, but in reality, it's, it was just impossible. Um, I don't know. So we changed it in, in their position later, had their legs far more bent and splayed. Oh my god, it was still hard work. I mean, it, it was a in an ideal world, it looked great on paper, but in reality, it was really. Cool. But, but Jake, that was one of the ones we made, wasn't it? You know, that did yeah. actually come to fruition, and it, it, I, yes. it wasn't far off what you drew there with their no, layout. No, shows, but they were bent over a lot of the time. Yeah, and I don't know. I'm sure you know that, but for fun, they kept a tally of how many takes they did in that droid. And they had a they had a marker pen. No, I didn't know. And they they did a tally of. Did each. they? Okay. I remember them getting over two hundred and fifty takes in that droid, and you see it for about a whole two yeah. seconds solo. Yeah. And, and I remember we yeah. had it on set once on the Kessel Mines, and without yeah. telling, 
a stunt man decided he was going to vault over them. And a stunt, sure enough, vaulted over the crab droid, which I'm sure looked fantastic, but it destroyed the droid and frightened the life out of Tom and Derek. Yeah. So we wow. then missed a few takes because we were then had it down one of the mine tunnels. We were repairing it. We were cable tying it and gaffer taping it back together. Wow. After the stunt man kindly jumped over it. So uh, I do like no, that. It's, I appreciate that. It's, yeah. a, it's a great design. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam, you've got some of the concept droids, I think, as well to show. Um, I have indeed. I have indeed. What droids. would you like me to bring up? There's quite a few droids that don't make it on screen, unfortunately. Um, not the DOs, Sam, no. Um, hang on then. What have we got? I've got a giant orange droid. Oh, that we can talk in. about that one. Oh, yeah, we, 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 we can talk about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that one, Jake? That's that's an impressive one. That was yes, I and mean, look, I think it was even bigger than that in reality, wasn't it? Uh, that yeah. rise of Skywalker, yeah, we that was. Um, I don't know. We just come up with sort of what would be cool. Really, it's just one of these ideas where you just we have a lot of free reign as well, you know, to just come up with cool Star Wars type things that could go in the background, and we put them on the wall. And the director, JJ, in this case, yeah, that one be great. To have in, you know, the back of uh, uh, the desert planet, which is the name I forgot. Um, and it was, and, and a guy called Bendy built. We built a full scale uh, bottom section in this. So it was from the sort of legs down. He built six legs and an undercarriage, and he built half of the neck, which was joined onto it, and then the rest of it was created in CG by ILM. And you can see this bit when the gang, uh, Ray and, and everyone else, run towards one of the speeders just before they, when they leave the village, the Akiaki Festival, and they escape, and then they're chased by the troopers on those bikes. And it was quite cool. I don't know what it does. It sucks up sand and sticks it out and mines stuff, or who knows. Whatever they so what a, what about B U four D? Yeah, he was in the back, he was in Force Awakens, and I think he was in Last Jedi as well. You saw him briefly in Last Jedi, I think, but he, he was uh rebel based in Force Awakens, rooting about in the background. Again, that was I don't know, the idea was there that I wanted him to sort of shuffle. So he had these sort of like two I think what happened. I don't know. Just stayed pretty static in the end. But no, no, yeah, it was like God. The effort required to move those like that yeah. was quite hard. I think I think it became a tricky one to perform. But that that's actually Galaxy's Edge. They replicated that, and it's on really? display. Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, it's one of the many as you walk around the park. I think and, there's uh, a toy out as well now, isn't there? And there's I a toy. Yeah, yeah, toy. A toy just came out a few days ago. You know, in a, in a multi. A I'd like a toy. He says, <laughs> we're, trying, we're trying to get you one, John. We're trying uh, to get you one. I, can see. I know why I am. I was born to the God. Um, uh, yeah. You, you, you found that, Jake. I was going to mention that later on, actually. But how cool is it? The stuff you've designed, you know, not only is it in a Star Wars film, but it then comes out as a toy or, or as a Lego toy, you know, and stuff like that. How cool is that? How does that feel? Cooler. I, I, I've been asked this question before, and I think it, is, it gets cooler the further you progress away from the film. In that, when we do the films, obviously that is amazing. You know, it's like, that, but you kind of know that it, that's not a surprise. It's that that was what you signed up for, and it's still cool. I can't, it's still very cool to sit in the cinema and look on screen and go, me, there it is. But then what's kind of cooler is when, when you do get a toy. Right. And that is like, wow, somebody else has kind of had to sort of re sculpt it and, or redraw it or repaint it. And then this gets even, this is where it gets cooler. Is that when it gets cooler when you then see, I don't know, like you're walking along the street and you see a kid wearing a BB 8 t shirt, say. Of course. And yeah. that, that kid, that, you know, that kid loves that character, right? So you, now you, it's gone beyond this. Now, it's now become this sort of object of this kid's sort of, you know, they really love it. And then it gets, still gets cooler. Like when you see, uh, I think when you see people who do cosplay, right, or like 
are to well, BB-8 builders club, you know, people who make the damn things and put time and effort and investment of, of you know, love into these things. That is even cool. That's like where you get the most cool. Oh, when a, I get people that have written me, you know, kids have written me letters. And I get you know, a bit of fan mail, and I've had people draw me a picture. And it's like, wow, you're like a little kid, and you've drawn a picture of a porg, and you love porgs, or whatever, you know, and yeah. they've drawn it. And that, that, that's where it gets the coolest because then they're doing the thing that I was doing when I was a kid, which was drawing, you know, spaceships and and Star Wars influenced stuff. And it's kind of full circle, I suppose. So that's the that's, coolest bit. You see the influence had on kids. Oh, Jake, so you you froze a little bit there, Jake. It's all right. We we did get that. That's cool. Yeah, I've I've never yeah. never taken it to that level to that step. I've never thought of it that way. You know, I've I've seen like when I've been at an airport or something, and you see the kids with their BB-8 suitcase, and I think, oh, look, little do they yeah. know. You know, they're they're near people that have worked on Star Wars, and we've had this cool job. Oh, there it is. There's yeah. the point. There you go. There he is. Hey, look, so it's that old original R1 unit. That's right. Yep. Hey. Yep. <laughs> and well, B- so this is part of a, uh, a droid pack at Galaxy's Edge, which is a, um, a five-piece droid pack, um, which, you know, again, it's, you know, it's awesome. It must, it must be, you know, it's pretty, you know. Close. <laughs> pretty close, isn't it? Pretty close. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm just saying the, the patterns, but hey, they, they're all different patterns. He might not be. He's been repainted, or it's a different model, but the same brand. Whatever, they could all have different paint jobs. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Jake you touched on it earlier on, and um, if you could talk a bit more about Dio, which is you know one of your most recent creations on the Star Wars universe. Yeah. Dio. Um, Another cool droid, you know. It's um, you had the responsibility again. Were you the only person involved in that most most of the time, or was that one that was pitched to all of you? In yeah, the- it was pitched to all of us. So I think again, if you look in the art of book, you'll certainly see. I know Luke's got Luke Fisher's got some work in there. Maybe a, a couple of the other guys. I, for a long time, it was Luke, Luke and I were both doing a lot of work on it. It sort of got down to two of us doing it, and I think JJ was like. Oh, I quite like this bit that Luke's doing, and I quite like this bit that Jake's doing. Again, as a team effort, you've got, I, I can't remember now where the single wheel came from. Um, I know that Josh and Matt had created, uh, Matt Denton had created a, a, a little mock up that did have this one wheel. It was certainly a conversation that was happening. And then they made this mock up, um, which kind of worked on a stick, again, similar to BB 8. And that really sold JJ. So he was very sold on this sort of scale of, of it was always going to be small, but seeing this this little prototype, that it would have one wheel. So we were very locked into this one wheel uh, design quite, you know, from a certain point, at which time Luke and I were both developing the overall look. So Luke and I were both doing lots of things that had one wheel and different heads. And then that sketch, you know, you, there is a sketch, uh, that one, which you can sort of see. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking. Top right, uh, you know, there is something which essentially is Dio. It's got a circle. I don't know really whether it's a wheel or a body. I don't think I was thinking about it at the time. But uh, he, JJ loved that little head that appears in the top right of these pictures. And uh, one of the, I suppose, the early briefs, we get very min- kind of minimal briefs quite uh, abstract. I think JJ wanted, he, he was describing Dio as being, he's, he, he's broken, he wasn't working, and he was going to get mended by BB-8. Um, and he comes back to life. And like a duck, this is JJ's kind of saying, like a little baby duckling hatching out of an egg would latch on to the first thing it sees as the mother yeah. figure or parent figure. So ducklings were being bandied about as a thing, which is why on that sheet with the duckling, and there are various shapes which I'm riffing off duff, ducklings, I suppose. Yeah. It's a starting point, even though I know we're not going to do a literal duckling droid. That would be not right. But, you know, it's a starting point. Let's find some ideas. One of those ideas, I suppose, is the, the, the shape of the head. You know, I distilled the duckling's beak and head 
big head, small beak into a cone. You know, so it's a distillation yep. of an overall shape. So I suppose the cone shape is a some sort of distant nod back to the shape of a bird. Yeah, it has a bird-like feel to it. That's probably where the cone comes from. Right? And then JJ loved the cone, whether he kind of saw that bird-like thing, under, I don't know. But he loved the cone. He loved the asymmetric amount of eyes. A lot of time in the early drawings, he's kind of got five stripes. And um, yeah, then we just played around with that on you know, on the ball. And even then, we I, thousands of different eye variations. Some of them like with slits. Some of them totally different, like little dots. And we just played and really just keep on trying to find. A lot of the time, we kind of try to find answers by trying things which you almost think they're not going to work. But at least everyone's seen the options that aren't going to work, and they're quite we then to sort of go back to the start. We do go back to where we have quite a lot. And you sort of think, oh, crikey, we should have just done this once again. Here we go but, again. <laughs> but it does answer the questions. It, it, it set, you, you know then you've, you've gone down every avenue. They're not right. Even if that old idea was right, it's right. You know damn well it's right. Yeah. You've, yeah. you've tried all the other ideas. So yeah, and then it's, it's got just into details of, of color and grill. Yeah, there's options on his little nose. There's options on his, on his um, just every detail. And again, going back to Josh as input. I mean, Josh, again, designing this thing every step of the way. I was working, you know, with Josh um, to sort of just, you know, he, Josh. Just would lead something, so he had to have this two rod action to sort of control. He'd go up the side, he's got two rods. One of them is a sort of pull and pull that yeah. has to be there because that's what it does. And the scale of the thing, it looks quite cool. I mean, maybe you could have we could have hidden it inside a sleeve or something, but we quite liked, I think JJ is quite like that sort of rough and ready feel. Yeah, you know, he's, yeah, I think he's, he's got. Nice. Exposed cables, which are deliberate. Yeah, he's meant to, they're meant to be. They're meant to be there. Whether he came out the factory with exposed cables, I'm not sure. But they wanted that sort of mended, old. He's been around a very long time. Feel. And anyway, so Josh, Josh's sort of limitations on his mechanical limitations would drive certain design features. I guess still, even yeah, in every step of the way, right. you check. Yeah. Will it work? Is it going to fit? <laughs> Can he still do this? <laughs> so, Jake, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll just show you. This is uh, this is a picture from Galaxy's Edge. There's the um, that's uh, that's the real that's the real deal. Um, and I do have a question as well. What's your um, visibility like for droid builders? Do you see the fact that you know people are putting this stuff out within about two days of it being no, released? Um, and you can't you know, do you, do you have any visibility to people kind of building stuff? Sorry, like this? no, I don't give you any thought. I don't give you any help. <laughs> no, I don't. But I, I'm blown away. I, I, honestly, like, Dio came out on stage on that first, it was that uh, celebration, wasn't it? And Dio, hey, yeah. here's Dio, and he scoots out. I still don't quite know how Josh built that. I mean, that's just insane. The, the yeah. free road. And, I think I'd left by that time. And how that thing turns is a mystery. Um, but still, you know, I saw that. And then within days, people were making this thing. And I'm thinking, what, you're extracting all the information from, like, one photo of Vanity Fair and one, like, video of him rolling across the thing. Now, I, uh, yeah, it's, um, I couldn't believe that you could already start doing it. It's, and it was brilliant. It was spot on. Yeah, you know, the, the detective work is incredible. I'm, I'm so yeah, always, I'm just always impressed. I'm just impressed by everything you guys do. Whether it's BB8, you mean yeah, I mean all of it. It's just like I wouldn't know. Yeah, where it, was, to start. it was it was funny at the time in the workshop when Oliver and I were the new boys in the workshop and we saw BB8 being developed and we were like, "There's going to be a builders club for this droid," and they're like, "No, no," I said, "There will be people replicating this droid." Like, really? And sure enough, you know, they were on it. And like we say, very, very quick with it. <laughs> yeah, well, fantastic. I don't think we'll keep you any longer, Jake. I think, you know, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. 
before I go, before I go, I, you said, I know last time I drew, I did you a little picture. Are you doing, are you doing another thing, aren't you? Another, yeah, we are. Uh, yeah, this is part of a live marathon session again, not as long as last time. It's going to be a five hour show, but uh, raising money for Calm again. So, yeah. Do you want another picture? Of course. Yes. That's yes. very kind yes. of you. Yeah. Okay. No, it's pleasure. No, I'd love to. It's good to be able to help you out with that thing. So, uh, yeah, if you're going to do another one, then easily do another one and, and I'll do, I don't know, BB-8 again or thing. Why not? Yeah, yeah. That'd be lovely. That'd be amazing. Yes, please. And if, and if, thought... if you've got enough time to do it between now and the 6th of December. Okay. <laughs> yes. Then we, two weeks. Then, Just knock something then up. we would cut to me and Sam in the studio going, and here it is. Yeah. There we go. So hopefully, no by the time you're watching it, I will already draw it. 